We're out to take a look at the left leg of Corum. And uh, he was in visible pain, had tears in his eyes, and they're taking him back there to be evaluated. You came back for this exact moment. What's going through your mind right now? Speechless, man. Blessed. God bless. Me. You God said. Bless this team. What's good, everyone? After watching the national championship recently, I thought now is the perfect time to make a video on the story of Blake Corum, as I've been a fan of Blake Corum for years now. Blake recently just came off probably the greatest season you could possibly ever dream of as a running back, breaking records while scoring two touchdowns in the national championship to cap off the season. The story of Blake Corum starts in Marshall, Virginia, a small town with only one stoplight and with a total population of less than 3,000 people. Blake started to take football seriously in fifth grade, where that was when he would really work on his game and dream of making it to the NFL. Blake went to high school at St. Vincent in Maryland, where his parents would drive him two hours to and from school every day. Now, if you're wondering why anybody would ever do this, if you come from a small town, it is much harder to get recruited or noticed by any big time school, since you wouldn't be playing with or against any competition where many players are getting recruited to play in college. Although I'm not sure why he had to go all the way to Maryland, as I grew up around 30 minutes from Marshall, Virginia where Blake grew up, and there was plenty of good competition where I lived in the DC metro area. Because of how long a commute Blake had to go to school, Corum would have to wake up at 3am and get home at 7.30pm every day. Even though Corum started to receive some D1 offers out of St. Vincent High School, Blake wanted to go to a national powerhouse in St. Francis Academy in Baltimore, Maryland. This made the commute problem much easier since St. Francis was an academy school, so Blake was able to live on campus and walk to school rather than driving two hours. However, one problem was the head coach Biff Pogge liked bigger running backs, and there were other higher ranked D1 running backs at St. Francis. However, even though Quorum stood at only 5'8", he beat out every running back at St. Francis and quickly became the starting running back. At around this time is when I really started to hear about Blake Corum as he was one of the top players around the DMV. Blake was also one of the main players featured in the HBO documentary on St. Francis Academy called The Cost of Winning. And Blake finished his high school as a four-star recruit and chose to commit to Michigan over Ohio State. Corum struggled in his freshman year at Michigan just like how most freshmen would, as he only got 26 carries in a shortened COVID year. Although ever since his sophomore year, Corum has been one of the best running backs in the country, and last year, Corum was a Heisman candidate and was planning on declaring for the NFL Draft. However, on his last game of his home season at Michigan, Blake went down with a serious injury. After Michigan lost in the college football playoffs last year to TCU, Blake decided that it was not going to be the way he was going to end his college career, as he decided to not declare for the NFL Draft and to come back from Michigan for one year. And we all know how this year went for Blake as he broke the single season rushing touchdowns at Michigan, scoring 27 rushing touchdowns and leading this Michigan squad to a national championship. Now, I'm pretty sure Blake will declare for the draft, even though I think he will still have another year of eligibility left. But regardless, I wish nothing but the best for Blake, as he seems like an extremely humble person, and I always see him in the media doing great things on and off the field, using his NIL money to give back to the less fortunate. Let me know in the comments down below where you think Blake Corum will be next year, as he hasn't declared for the draft yet, as he is only projected to go second or third round because of his size at only 5'8", and with all these NIL deals, Blake will still be making a lot of money at Michigan. Well, that's it for the video today. Make sure y'all go like and subscribe if this is a new and upcoming channel.